Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Ian Littlejohn. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the new ChatGPT Release 4 Omni update. Now this particularly affected data analysis. So we're gonna be seeing that we get some great new features. So the first one is, is that we can now connect to Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. So instead of downloading your files, uploading your files, you can actually connect straight to your Google services or to your Microsoft services. The next part we're gonna be looking at is you get interactive tables now. So we can now see the full table of data. We can now select parts of the table. We can work with the data. So we're gonna be looking at some examples of that in the tutorial. And also we get interactive graphs. So you're gonna see that we get more details with our graph that we can actually work with. So these are the things that we're gonna be taking you through in this tutorial. Please, as always, please remember to actually subscribe and to like our videos. Keep up to date with all the latest content that we're producing. But let's jump into the tutorial. I will see you there. Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the release updates for the ChatGPT4 Omni release. So basically, I'm in my ChatGPT at the moment. If you go up to your models, you'll see that we've got the GPT-40, which at the time of putting this together was the latest model from OpenAI. So we're going to continue to use our sales data. So if you've done some of the previous tutorials in the series, you should be used to the sales data that we've been working with. So we're going to be working with that. And the first part that I want to show you about the updates is that we can actually now connect to Google Drive and connect to Microsoft OneDrive. So this is really nice when you want to be able to just connect to your files. You don't want to be able to have download and then re-upload your files. So it really does make life a lot easier. Just one thing to remember if you're using the ChatGPT Pro version is to make sure that in your settings that you've got the training of the model off if you're using your own personal data. Now in this case, we're using training data, so I'm not too worried if I'm training the model or not. If you're using the Teams or the Enterprise Edition, I think OpenAI have the training of the model off by default. But in the Pro version, I don't think it's off by default. So just double check that. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to now look at this sheet of data. So I'm going to start off with a message. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to load and I'm going to tell it to display the data. And the first part that we're going to be seeing about the updates now is we're going to work with a much more interactive table when it comes to being able to do our commands. Hopefully you should see as well ChatGPT Omni a lot quicker than what we've seen with the previous releases. So in some of the previous videos, I had to speed videos up quite a bit when we were giving it commands. But hopefully in this case, it should be a lot easier. In this case, what it's doing is it's given me an interactive table at the top. It's also building a traditional table down at the bottom where it's showing some preview of the data. But this is the table that I'm interested in at the moment. Wherever you see these two icons, then you know that you're working with the new tables. The first one is the ability to download the table. Now you may remember from previous tutorials, we used to give it a command to say download the table. Now you can actually just do it at a click of a button. Also what we get the ability to do is to expand and work with this table. So if I expand the table, you'll now see that we now get this whole area which is showing me the table. I can also use my scroll bars, move across here, see all of the data. Also I can move up and down with all the data. Now again, if you've seen the previous tutorials, you'll remember that when we had a bigger data table, what it used to do was show a few rows and then go dot, 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 and then show the end rows. So it didn't show the entire table. So it's quite nice that we got the entire table to work with. Now that we're in the table, let's look at another feature that we can use. So basically, if we choose one of the columns, you'll see that the column is now selected. And we can now work within context of that column. So let's say, for example, I only want to see all the records that begin with Liz. And now because we've selected customer name, we can do that. So let's just say filter for all records. I'm going to say beginning with Liz in this case. And we'll give that to ChatGPT to work on. And hopefully we should see that our new table now only has the records with the customer that begins with the name Liz. So that's really nice. You can select one of these columns and knows which fields that you're actually working with. Now we're going to look at an example of this a little bit later on in this tutorial as well. I'm going to look at how you can clean up your data a little bit and some of the changes you can do. Because with this new interactive table, I think it gives us a lot of abilities to be able to manipulate your tables better, clean up your tables. So I'm going to be showing you some examples of that. Okay, but for now, what I do want to do is let's just jump back and collapse this. And what you'll see is let's start from the top again and we'll see that we've got our first table. As we go down, we'll now see that we've created a new table with that filter that we put on for the Liz's records. 
So now, if we say we want to create a new table displaying, let's say we want to see sales, let's say create table displaying total sales by product name. So when we press enter on that now, we're going to see that it's now going to be done in context though of this filtered record. So the total sales by product name, and we'll look at the result of this, will only be four in list. And you can see that these total sales are quite small. Let's just actually do total sales. Let me say that we want to sort it from highest to lowest. And we can see the total sales values. Okay, there we have the total sales values. So I know that there's product names with sales much higher than this. So that's one thing to just be careful of is when you are working and you put a new command in, you need to know which records that you're working with. So if you wanted to see the total sales by product name for the whole data set, then you've got to tell it that you want to see. So we would have to say, create a table displaying total sales by product name for entire data set. And then we will not be working with the filtered data set. Okay, in this case, it's going to give me two responses. It's going to ask me which one I prefer. Okay, so there we go. It's finished analyzing. And you can see that the response to is actually a, the traditional table that we used to get. But in terms of figures, you can see that this is a total for the product name, a lot larger than the one we had before. But I'm going to choose this one and say we prefer number one. And you can see now that when we work with this, as you can see, those figures are much higher. So that's just something to look out for is that when you are doing your analysis is make sure you know which data set you're actually working with when you're putting in your commands. So just something to look out for. OK, we're going to move on, though, and I'm going to move across to some graphs. So some of the updates that ChatGPT have is around the graphing that we've got. So we're going to start off, let's create a column graph. So we're going to say create a column graph. And we're just going to say displaying total sales by region. And I'm going to say from entire data set. Just to make sure that we are working with the whole data set for the generation of this. OK, so you're going to see that there's a new graph type here. And basically what's happened is that we have two types of graphs. So we have a static graph. So if I say switch to the static graph, you'll see that this was the traditional type of graph that we got in the previous tutorials. However, now I can switch to an interactive graph. And one of the things it does give me, for example, is tooltips. So when I go over this, it's showing me the totals. So I get that by, by default. Also, what you'll see is that if we choose this, you can do this in different colors. So you can have different colors for this. So just a couple of options. And again, you could make this large if you wanted to. So if you're working with it or if you wanted to download the chart, you could do this. Now, please note at the moment, this is only available in certain chart types. So if we did a line chart, so let's say create a line chart. and Let's say for total sales by year and month. Hopefully we should see that this is also one of the new graph types as well. OK, so there we go. It is one of the new graph types. You can see it a little bit different. Again, if you want to put this in the static chart, you could select that. You get just a static chart type. Again, if you want to change your data colors for this, could do. So it just gives you a couple more options. In theory, we then, there we go, we've got our tooltips showing you some of the data. So that's just an, an additional option as well, is that they have been doing some work on the charts. Now, I do expect that as they go along, you're going to see a lot of changes happening to this quite quickly. So I do think that these charts and the way that we're interacting with the tables, hopefully we're going to see also improvements and new features coming about quite quickly. OK, but that's kind of what we've got at the moment. What I do want to conclude the tutorial with, though, is the ability to work with your interactive 
chart is that it does allow us to do some table manipulation. So I just want to show a couple of examples of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to load a new file. Okay, so in this example, we're going to be loading some employee data through a CSV file. So again, I'm going to start by loading and displaying the data. So again, you can see that the table comes up pretty quickly. We're going to be looking at this because one of the things that you might want to do with your data is to clean it up. So I'm just going to look at some of the features that we've got. I also do intend to do a full tutorial on some of the options that we can do when we're cleaning up our data as to some of the things we're going to be able to do. Okay, so I'm going to move up and let's go to our interactive expand table view. And you can see that we've now got the table being shown. So let's say, for example, I've got some fields that I actually don't want. Let's say I've got these three fields and I actually want to remove them from the table. So you can see three columns selected and I'm going to say remove columns. And there we go. We should see that they get removed from our data set. Okay, so that's the first thing we can do, cleaning up our employee data. Let's move on. Let's say, for example, that we want to change the heading for this. So again, I'm going to choose this and I'm going to say change heading to job position. Let's enter on that. And there we go. We can now see that we've got the new heading. If I look at my birth date as well, you'll see that we've got a time element on this. Maybe we want to remove this. So again, let's choose birth date and say remove time from field. And basically, as I've been saying in all the previous tutorials on ChatGPT, you literally are just giving a command or instruction like you would tell somebody. And as you can see, it's now removed the time element from this birth date. Okay, one last one that we're going to look at is, let's say we got this marital status and we wanted to change M to married and S to single. Again, we can select the column and we're going to say change M to married and S to single. Again, let's accept that. And hopefully ChatGPT will do those changes for us. And there we go. It's actually changed the marital status, married and single. So there are a few more examples that I could run you through. But as I say, I'm going to probably do a separate tutorial on just working with some data, doing some cleanups and seeing what we can do with this. Okay, we're going to conclude the tutorial there. I hope that I will see you in further tutorials.